What is up, Watch Fam? I am Christian, the curator of the Theo and Harris Watch Shop. And I'm Michael. The, the, the delay there. You're, you're right, pal. <laughs> what in the same And in though? Houston, Texas, Michael. Thank you, Christian. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> Boom, watch fam. <laughs> Hi, uh, watch fam. People said I need a title. I have a title. I just choose not to share it. It's very private. Yeah, hey, what's your title? Director, Director of, of content. content. Whatever contents I am <laughs> having, I had to put it out there. If you guys are new to the show, uh, Michael and I talk about watch news. Yes, right? we do. So yes. today we're going to be talking about, what, brew watches, a, a little micro brand under 500 bucks. They do fantastic stuff. Definitely take a look. Yes. Next subject was... The Olympic watches and some tennis watches. A Casio that I uh, I adore. Yes. A, a Casio that was simply divine. A custom Olympic Casio watch worn by a tennis player. Very cool. Yes. Uh, Richard Mill, which is something that I don't really care about, but the watch is cool. The, yep. wa the watch is cool. I, mean, yeah. I, I don't like the watch. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I try. I, like I tried to, try to lie to you I like guys. I just couldn't. I, You're just so honest. I'm just, just not. <laughs> it's like, like, oh, my God. we got to redo this whole thing. I lied. Yeah, I, I, I lied. Like um, and, then, um, and then what else? Was, Jeffrey. Jeffrey Bezos. <laughs> yeah, we killed this. Uh, and Jeffrey Bezos went to outer space yes. and wore a, an Omega. And yeah. um, you know what? We, I feel like Omega didn't do enough on that. That's what I was going to say. What in the world? Why didn't you call us? Omega, are you kidding? Yeah. Like, we, we, you did it again. I don't get it. Because that, that, it's such a great opportunity. Like, you know, whatever. Yep. And then uh, a certain I'm, I'm someone. I'm just thinking about you're it. covered in it. <laughs> Coming in Schwitz, and then a certain someone is coming back, and you're going to talk about... A certain someone is back on the show! Today, well, the first thing I wanted to bring up was just Brew. I saw that he released a new watch, and I know that you know him. John! Yeah, John's John. man. Yeah. Beautiful so, guy. Beautiful man. <laughs> also, his watches are actually some of my favorite designed micro-brand watches ever. You love them? Oh, yeah. I like them. I like them a ton. I mean, you know. I think they're great. Yeah, they are great. So he released a new watch. He started the brand in 2015, but he released the Metric, which may be one of my favorite watch designs he has so far. That is beautiful. Yeah, right? Mecha yeah. Quartz, 395 bucks. Great deal. Super 70s. Super 70s, yeah. That's so 70s. That's so... That? <laughs> oh, that's so 70s. There's a show about that, you know? Anyways, that was brew watches. Next up, though, more into the meat of this, some Olympic watches. The biggest one, or the one that started off, is really the only Olympic watch, but then we'll get into the tennis rant in a second. Mm -hmm. Kai Nishikori, a Japanese tennis player, was wearing a modded Cassie Oak, skeletonized, with this rainbow mod from IFL Watches. That is that was, amazing. Yeah, I thought that was amazing. That is amazing. That is a big move. He actually modded his own... IFL modded his watches, not the wow. tennis player. That is awesome. Yeah, so skeletonized, and he was spotted wearing basically a regular Cassie Oak, too, at a different time at Wimbledon. What is a Cassie Oak, for those of people who don't know, including oh, that's myself? That's a great question. A Cassie Oak is Cassio's G their latest G-Shock model mm -hmm. that resembles very slightly a Royal Oak. Gotcha. And that's like, basically, there's a DW5600E, which is... or. 5600, which is the first, like, square one. Classic G-Shock, the mm. one I wear. And that was the famous one. Do you think that y y it is odd that you know the model name of the Casio? Yes. This one I didn't know. GA2100SKE-7A. Mm. That one I was like, I have no idea what watch it is. DW5600? Go, yeah. go figure. Go fi <laughs> what are the odds? Go figure you didn't know the overly long, <laughs> ridiculous... Which number. is the most Casio thing ever. Yeah, it makes no sense. That's a great watch, though. That's a beautiful watch. And it was interesting because I, I really like, I feel like tennis is a s applicable spot for watches because it's like, how many Gs can your watch survive, right? Because you're hitting the ball and moving it fast. You know what I'm talking about? Gangsta? Yeah. How many, how, how many gangsters can you beat what? off with a tennis rack? Jeez, like oh, G-Force. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. So, like, that's a really, like, it does not make any sense. <laughs> Real motherfucking G. Because it's sitting here like... I'm staring at you like, what are you Ooh, saying? Cartier is probably like 10 Gs. Yeah. Because it's not that big. <laughs> On size wise alone. But I think it's interesting because, like, basketball, it doesn't make sense to have a watch on. You're jumping, you're getting pulled around. Baseball, maybe. But tennis, I feel like definitely. You're by yourself, you're solo, you're hitting it back and forth. So maybe you have to check your time in between. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. That's why I think tennis is interesting. And tennis usually just gets massive companies behind them. Most notably, F.P. Jorn 
sponsors Donna Vikic, Croatian really? woman tennis player. She's a joint ambassador. And That's this cool. is her. Oh, how cool is that? Right? That's awesome. To First me, of all, you, those watches are like impossible to get now. Everyone like, yeah, you right. know, or they're, or they're like, you know, have big numbers. Yeah. But that's so cool to see a, to see a, prof- I mean, she's a professional athlete. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I like how I had to qualify that. I mean. It's like, um, a, a, a being sponsored or whatever in partnership with like, a br- like not Rolex. You know F-D what I mean? Like, Jordan, like, yeah. Right, like, that's so cool. Yeah. Like, that's awesome. Yeah, that, I thought that was super interesting. I wonder if she's like a watch geek. I wonder if she gives a shit about that watch. That's an awesome watch. I was looking up pictures to Talk find to, to post right? here, and she basically had this watch on every time. Speaking of people who, uh, you know, well, brand partnerships, I love when a photo is posted of David Beckham and he's not wearing a Tudor. He's always wearing a gold Yeah. <laughs> well, with so Leonardo DiCaprio, all these people, it's just like, oh, okay. You know what's crazy? So uh, this year, Tudor released the gold uh, Tudor Black Bay. Yep. My friend bought it. Whoa. When he told me, yeah. I almost spit out my Negroni. How did it look? <laughs> That's the I most was like, Christian said, <laughs> onto your stubs and wutons. Onto, onto my Belgian <laughs> shoes, yes. Um, anyway, I was like, is is Michael, and I was like, uh, you're kidding. And he's like, dude, I think it's I think it's fire. I think it's the most amazing thing. And wow. then he's, I love it. I love you it. love it. The, well, I didn't want to, I thought it was so ridiculous. Right. I liked the watch. Yeah, yeah. But it was so ridiculous when it came out. And then I was like, who's going to buy this? Right. You know? Michael. And then I said, okay, some nut job is going to buy it, whatever, <laughs> like some quack. Some guy you would never be friends with. And then this guy, this guy whose watch collection is fantastic, he's a great vintage explorer, a lot of great watches, but not, oh, not a I huge collection. Not a huge collection. Yeah. Do you? Yeah. He bought the Rolex Explorer. Different Michael. Oh. But also... A Michael. Yep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you know, not far it's off. It's okay, pal. Oh, okay. We're getting it. And, and I said, like, wow, what made you... I think it's actually the most expensive... No, no, it's, it's the second most expensive watch in his collection. Wow. Um, yeah. Wow. Like, so it's not like this dude's like, just this guy, like, all this money, like, 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 crazy, crazy collection. No, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's a, he's a normal guy. Uh, and when he got... Oh. I was like, this is amazing. This is the coolest thing. Wears it all the time. He says, wow. I get more enjoyment out of this watch than so many other watches, you know? Wow. Yeah. Do you see the case pack? Yeah, what is it? it it's it's see through, but it's just a base. Like I yeah. think it's a modded. No, no, it's Tudor now. They have their own in-house movement, but it's a pretty like not yeah. finished movement. Did you see that? Mm-mm. No, I didn't. I guess because it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, but right. it was cool though. It yeah, was yeah. really really cool. Michael, if you're watching this, then um, you did an awesome job, man. You bought that watch. Like He's the coolest dude. Good. He really is a really nice guy. He's got a nice name. I'll tell you uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> First off, thoughts on RM in general? None. Not I don't care. None thoughts. I don't care. Okay. Well. I think that they're. I think they're. Uh... Well, really none. Like <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I think they're kind of dumb. I mean, no, I mean, no. <laughs> I mean, that's so not fair. I mean, um, I don't see myself hanging out with a lot of RM guys. That's tough. Because I feel like we don't look at the world the same way. If I make a lot of money, I'm going to get one. And that's great. Yeah. And, and then, I, then that's, that's great. I could, I could, yeah, yeah. You, you could be my token RM friend. Well, you could also prevent me from making a lot of money. Yes. You're like, that's great. That's actually... I'm going to note that. That's really great. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I just... I don't... Um, it's not for me. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to talk about it. I think it's a world I'm going to talk about it anyways. Because I think it's really cool. This uh, this is the watch brand that doesn't fit with me. Like, it is Roger Dubuis. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you got to take care of business real quick? Yeah. It's a watch that doesn't fit with me, but it is... It's like Roger Dubuis, but I think it's really cool. Specifically, this one, the RM027. Hodnicki says it's a marvel of engineering that it's both tough enough to endure the incredible forces of a tennis player and all this, but whatever. The watch is 30 grams with the strap on, and it floats in water. And can take up to 12,000 Gs. Which is at the time was RM's like big feet. I don't really know. That's more G's than there are in Brooklyn. You're like, <laughs> you're like really? Oh, really? I might have to get that. Um, in New York. That's that's interesting. Uh, so the floating in water thing is very cool. Yep. When you say, would you say how many grams? Thirty. That means nothing to me. Thirty. Put your hand up. Put your hand up. I have. N- <laughs> <laughs> Thirty. That I think is cool. That it's super light and this like mesh that you oh, see it's so horrible to look is at. based off. No, oh my His God. racket. That mesh serves a purpose and basically takes a bunch of the shock, which mm-hmm. is how it can absorb it. Which I think is crazy cool. I wear that watch in two seconds. Yeah. Pride fully. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. How about you guys? You guys like RM? Everyone's like, no. Also, Michael has an Apple Watch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, where is it? Right over there. That's right here. See? Michael wears an Apple Watch sometimes. I do. It's actually... Uh, 
It's a watch. You should buy a vintage watch that we'll talk about now. Yeah, uh, watches. Okay, I'm wearing a Cartier tank. It, you know, and this is like total like proof like that that I really like you you know walk to walk to. I always say you wear a Cartier tank anytime, kind of anywhere. Yep. Suit people come to suit. Yep. I'm wearing a ridiculous bathing suit and a yep. t-shirt and a Cartier tank, and I think it looks great. I it really do. Great, yeah. And if it doesn't look great, then I don't know. It's I think it feels good. Yeah. And that's what I have a mustache. By the way, do you guys see my mustache? I knew I was waiting I, uh, for that to come back in the I, Yeah. <laughs> by the way. Uh, I, sh I shaved here, but not here, so... Uh, <laughs> so it's, that's a mustache. <laughs> Alright, uh, other vintage watches? Yes, oh yes, I sell vintage watches for a living. Yes, he does. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's part of my income. It is. So if Actually, you guys... Actually, a large chunk of it. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, that is a vintage Hoyer on your wrist. What do you yes, think it about is. it? I love the Carrera Hoyers. Mm -hmm. All of them, especially the 90s reissue, but yep. this is just the right size. OG. It's, OG, yeah. It's the right size. It's perfect. And it's a chronograph. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's just you a can't get over. And it's, size. it's a Hoyer. It's not a tag Hoyer. Right. Big. Yes. Don't call yes. us a tag. All of these watches are for sale in the Theo and Harris watch shop. Yes, uh, I am the curator of that said shop, of the aforementioned retail store. Yes. And um, and uh, I answer all the emails. So if you guys are looking to buy a watch, uh, shoot an email in. And uh, we do trades, of course. We do watch servicing. Yep. Um, listen, it's a thing. I mean, it's 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 a blast. What if I need a strap, though? I need a watch. Oh, we don't sell those. <laughs> no, we have Dang a fantastic it. collection of straps. Yes. Uh, we, have, we have three different manufacturers. One is in Italy, one is in Texas, and one is in, uh, well, about an hour and a half outside of Paris. And uh, and it's amazing. Yes. And it's amazing. I'm actually I'm actually going to uh, to Paris yep. uh, in September to go visit the factory. Yep. So Make sure it's up to standards. Make sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, well, yeah, work harder. Good job. <laughs> Come on, Jeff. Get him. Okay. So, first thing, you sent me the picture because a lot of people were freaking out by the fact that Jeff and all the other astronauts were wearing a watch outside of their cuff. Yes. That's not weird. That's actually less weird than how we wear all of our Seamasters yes. and Submariners and yes. stuff like that. Outside of the uniform you're wearing because the uniform you're wearing serves more of a purpose. When you're wearing a dress shirt, that is to keep you clothed. Yes. This is to keep you safe from money. So now he, now he went to space. Je well, It happened already. It already happened, yep. There's debate, or not debate, but it's, it's like, yeah, it's like NASA says it's space, or NASA doesn't say it's space, it's one of those things. But he left the Earth's atmosphere. Okay. So, hey. I have a little rundown of the three people, well, like, of the four well, people. Where have you been? <laughs> like, <laughs> I think Bridgewater's far. Yeah. <laughs> I, I go to Summit, I bring my passport. Yeah. Also, I, I haven't really looked at a lot of interviews with Jeff Bezos, but <laughs> since he did this, everything that's coming out of him, I'm amazed at how he is and like what he sounds like. You're impressed by Jeff Bezos? No, no, no. Not impressed. Oh, you're not? Yeah, like... Really? People are like, are you that's in space again? That's an interesting take. Well, I'm impressed by Amazon and everything and him, but like, his personality is just not what I thought. Really? Like, people would be like, so you went to space, like, are, are you planning to go farther? And what do you think he would say? Don't do this with me. No, just do it. What is this a quiz? Yeah, what do you think? I don't know. I, I would think he'd be like, yes, yes, it like, was amazing or whatever. He goes, in a in that hat, this yeah. little, like, cowboy hat, he goes, hell yeah! <laughs> it's like, what? As if he just rode in a roller coaster. Hell, oh, hell yeah! And I was like, that's not wow. Jeffrey Bezos. That's cool. Hell yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bezos is there, his brother is there. Wally or Wally Funk, oldest person to ever go to space. Mm. She is the she was a part of this like the first woman to go to space program that then got mm. defunded, so she never went. So it's a really big deal. <laughs> she purchased a ticket for Virgin Galactic to go to space in 2010 for two hundred thousand dollars, still hoping she could go and couldn't go. So Jeff took her. <laughs> wow. I was like, oh my god. But anyways, then finally we have Oliver Damon, mm. a 17-year-old kid that his father paid for him to go to flight to go onto the spaceship. Yep. The person that actually won the bid paid 28 million dollars, then backed out. So he was up next, somewhere in the range of 20 to 28 million dollars yeah, right. to get on flight. Yeah, insane. Yeah. But anyways, more importantly, the watch that they took was a custom Omega Speedmaster. Not really crazy custom, but on the back there was an engraving with their name, the blue origin feather, mm -hmm. and that was about it. That's awesome. Yeah, so it's the 31030.4250.01.001, a.k.a. the Speedy with the Hesselite crystal. <laughs> <laughs> a.k.a. the watch that everyone has. A.k.a. the one... No, yeah, I, I love the Speedy. I like the Speedy way more than, like, 
Well, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I, yeah, I thought I would. I, I, like, yeah. I would buy one in two seconds. I really yeah, would. I, um, we do a lot of work with Omega, a mm-hmm, lot. Mm-hmm. And um, I really should just buy a Speedy, like, just as a sign of, like, hey, like... Let's keep doing this. Yeah, I really should. This it's is the fun. right thing to do. Yeah. If you guys are watching, I'll buy, like, I'll just email send me invoice. and I'll buy the Speedy. Yeah. I want the one with the new bracelet. Well, that's the Speedy. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, they they did that custom. I really band. like the gold one though. With the with the see uh, that's what that's, anniversary. Every time I go get anything, that's what happens. That's a, All right. Why why waste five when I could spend sixty? Anyways, that is Jeffrey Bezos' watch. Yeah. I think it's time to bring in the the heavy hitter. I think it is. It's time to put the white claw aside and bring in the Roly. <laughs> Mustache and all, all grown up and doing the town, guys. Holy, shit. when's the last liquor run? Well, you and I do liquor run almost three times a day, right. every day, right, forever. But it's been a while. It has. I can't believe I'm. I'm back. I'm so happy to be back. I'm happy to have you back. You're talking to the Legion of Fans. <laughs> It's all Rolly talks about. Where are my fans? Getting back to my fans. Uh, okay, many of you guys, the channel has gotten bigger since we've left on Liquor Run. Maybe some of you guys don't know. But uh, uh, this, this is my dad. He's a, he's a wine lover. He's a, he's a great guy. Uh, and and the you know, Liquor Run was a, was a series we introduced to the channel years ago just as a way to... Uh, I think just to just to give a vibe to the channel that was you know family and, and family values and I thought then that uh, one if I could get you give you an opportunity to talk about wine that's great and then two that uh, people would be more likely to buy a watch from someone that they that they saw was you know was a good decent person with a good fa- parents you know so wow that's kind of introspective but that, that that is the truth so this was all about money no, this summer we've been we've been uh, sucking down a lot of rosés yep right we've been Sucking down some reds. Yep. Let's talk a little bit about the wines. Yep. Okay. So everyone is, you know, thinking pink these days, mm-hmm. right? Yep. And uh, uh, and there's a lot of a lot of great rosé out there. There's a lot of not so good rosé. Yes. So you got to sift through a lot of stuff to get to the good ones. This happens to be a really really good one, and uh, this one's uh, called Hampton Water. This is what Stephen brought. Okay. This Steve is brings. yeah. Yes, thank okay. you, Stephen. Thank you, Stephen. And uh, this is a uh, this is a uh, collaboration between Bon Jovi, oh, get and uh, and I think it's uh, 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 Gerard Bertrand. Wow, okay, cool. And th- that guy is a monster rosé producer okay. in Provence in the Languedoc. Mm-hmm. And so uh, this is a this is a I, I would say a, a, a pretty good bottle. Great. Okay, that's awesome. Uh, so excited to try this. Our Spanish heart. Yes. Right? Castel Royce Cava. Rosé Cava. Mm-hmm. Beautiful, delicate, seafood. It's so versatile. Yep. Okay? And uh, and uh, so wallet-friendly. Right? Cava is is wallet-friendly. Where, where are we budget-wise here? We're wise. about, about uh, $14. Oh, that's great. $14 for a bottle of, of quality, high-quality, sparkling wine. And... Uh, I want to give a massive shout out to Costco. I know I, I'm probably going to get a lot of hate mail or whatever emails, but man, that company, first of all, they are the, the, the biggest importer and, and, and retailer of, of wine mm-hmm. in America. They have a tremendous team of people that are dedicated to bringing in quality wine. So make no mistake, because it says Kirkland, you should not disqualify the wine. Yep. These wines are serious. They're wonderful. And this is just one example. And this this Chianti Classico Reserva for the price point that you get it for is just absolutely ridiculous. It's like seven dollars. Like, right? Yeah, I think it's eight dollars. Whatever yeah. it is, but if Chianti Classico Reserva, it tastes delicious. Yeah. Um, just beautiful classic Sangiovese yeah. notes. It brings you right to Tuscany. Yeah. And uh, it's hard to find a, 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 a Chianti Classico Reserva at this price point from any other private label producer. Yeah. So kudos to Costco. Fantastic. Kirkland. Well, uh, I'm not ashamed to put this on the table. No, not at all. I mean, I, I, you know, Costco is interesting. I mean, you, you know, I, I don't know if this, 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 this fits with their wine. But I know, like, 
the, the things are loss leaders, right? And Costco's a company that, that understands that. And uh, I've heard like astronomical numbers about how much they lose in chicken every year. Yeah. They sell chicken like at a loss yeah. just to get you there, right? And uh, it, I mean, it, it makes perfect sense. But um, the buying power like that and priorities like that, a company like that can, can make some can deliver some serious value, you know. Yeah, you're gonna overpay on something else, maybe Corona. Yeah, probably. But but you're gonna pick up the, the wine, you know, at a really aggressive price. It's gonna make you come back. I, mean, I, I I've had that wine, you know, a dozen times, and it's it's always been really really nice. Yeah, no, they, they and it's not just in Italy. They do it in Spain. They do it in France. They do in, in Argentina. They're sourcing. They work with very good producers. Yep. And before they put that label on the, on their wine, mm-hmm. they make sure it's quality. So again. Big thumbs up. To can we have point. anything to drink? Uh, can we have? <laughs> <laughs> you're killing Are you, you're me. Jones in. I'm just dying. Let's let's do rosé. Let's do it. We went to a beautiful show last night, uh, right? We went yes. to uh, went to the Blue Note in, in New York City, and, and it, you know, it was it was awesome to be back. We haven't been to the Blue Note. It, I grew up, you you know, yo, almost two years, almost two years. Uh, obviously, COVID and then whatever. But um, uh, salute. Here's to you. Here's to you. Thanks for being back, Daddy O. Thank you. Uh, that's delicious. That's really tasty. And How great was the show, though? Fantastic show. Yeah, what, what, what do you say? If you're into jazz, if you're into jazz fusion, Al Di Maiola is really credited to being the, 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 the father of, of, of shredding. Okay, yeah. that real heavy rock sound. Yeah. Uh, uh, not to get too into it, into the weeds here, but, but he's uh, one of the masters of, 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 of uh, progressive you know, jazz guitar. Yeah, I mean, uh, just yeah. His, his Spanish stuff is like yeah. crazy. Yeah, you know. Yeah, he, he he has really an affinity and a love for 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 Spanish music. Ooh, Paco that, with right. and, and Paco you know. de Lucia, right? Yeah. If you guys are into like flamenco music, or you're not, and you just yeah. want to, I don't know, get Spanish and poetic in front of a girl, which always works. Yeah. Um, Fuente a Caldo. It's uh, it's like incredible. But you know, obviously, the reason is pa- Paco and Al, you know, right? Is, Master guitars. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Master guitars, and each one of them. So they, they, they. Uh, there was one album that brought together Paco de Lucia, Al de Meola, and John McLaughlin. Yes. Okay, and 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 interestingly enough, uh, they're all greats in their own right, but yet they all felt a little bit insecure around the other two. Yep. You know, because yep. they didn't know. Well, they didn't feel that they were worthy to be on the stage with the yep. uh, with each other. Yeah. And and uh, uh, and yet. Three masters and uh, a few, I think one or two albums were were, were put out uh, yeah. and really worthwhile listening. This one and is there's, actually and there's a Miles the, Davis song, John McLaughlin on, I believe it's on Bitches Brew. Another good tune, totally different. I believe it's, mm-hmm. if it's not if it's not on Bitches Brew, I'm gonna be embarrassed. Great tune. Um, the wine is delicious. How about dinner last night? Il Molino in the village in, in Greenwich Village, West Third, the original Il Molino. Yes. Uh, it looks nothing like the Il Molino in Nashville or down in Florida yeah. or maybe Las Vegas, wherever other mm. outposts are. This is the real deal. You know, uh, uh, wallpaper. Uh, it looks like a typical old uh, Nona's uh, living room, yeah. right? Because it's almost gaudy, but at the same time has such charm. Yeah. And the food is... is uh, uh, it's a, a fantastic meal. Yeah. I think it's just so cool that uh, that you know, some places don't change. Mm-hmm. You know, it's so old. Yes, and and it's so faithful to like its roots. It's so cool. Anyway, and great night. So that begs a question. I mean, do you have to change to keep up with the latest, or can you stay committed to the past and what you've known so well to be good yeah. and continue to provide that. If, if, if they changed, I probably wouldn't go back. I probably, yeah. I, I have, I'd have no interest. The only reason I go is because it's, it's because it's the real deal. Right. I'm out. That's yeah. it. They, they, yeah. they modernize that place. I mean, maybe you go back to see some of the waiters. Maybe you go back to, you know, taste the taste the, the cutlet again. Yeah. Um, but it's never the same. Right. It's never the same. I agree. You know? Yeah. Great night. Anyway, f***ing liquor run. We're back, We're baby. back. I can't believe this. This is beautiful. Uh, buy this wine. a long hiatus. But yes, let's buy this wine. Uh, I never thought I would say this, uh, given the prop to Bon Jovi, but, but you know, what a uh, 20 name bucks, for yeah. wine, though, right? Yeah, Hampton, Hampton Water. That keeps me from buying uh, this know, bottle. I know, it really does. But, but it, it, like it, 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 it comes from the south of France, yeah. from the Languedoc, uh, where there's a, a, that's a treasure trove of, 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 of uh, uh, fine wine value. Yeah. Uh, and, and, um, 
This is a Grenache, mm. Syrah, Sanso, Mouvedre, and uh, so it's a blended wine, mm. but uh, it, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Great. Yeah. Idea. And Costco. <laughs> buy, a, buy, a, buy a bottle of wine at Costco. Holy moly. If you can get this or any of the upcoming releases, the Cote de Rhone at Costco, I can't speak highly enough. It, you'll be rewarded uh, with, with really, really nice wines. Uh, they may not be wines for meditation, but they're going to make you very happy. And, uh, you know, what the hell? It's about being happy around the uh, around the table yep. with family and friends. This does it. Salud, Dario. Salud. Glad to have you back. Uh, Let's I'm keep back. it going. Huh? He's back. Roll, he's back. <laughs> uh, salud, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, like and subscribe if you like our stuff. If you don't, what do you want from me? Uh, <laughs> what do you want me to tell you? Yeah, what are you going to do? Hey, what are you going to do? All right, guys. Talk soon. Bye-bye. Ciao. <laughs>